Pair of them with a 100% record. Uh, early days, of course, still. Uh, Jan and Gab with us. But Craig, I wanted to start with you. How good were leads today? Very. And the uh, high energy tempo pressing, the kind of football mentality that, that uh, Jesse Marsh is selling, I, I think is perfect for Leeds. It's, uh, it's not a team with any they've got good players, but any real big stars. Obviously, Phillips and uh, Rafinha have gone. Uh, a couple of American lads and others have come in. And I think what his rhetoric, Jesse Marsh, will be listened to more by these kind of players, Tyler Adams, obviously. Yep. And they've got a lot of energy and they're quite young and they follow this plan well. So Chelsea had to expect that. They had to expect that Leeds at home, pressing high, pressing quick, lots of energy, getting around them. They had to expect that was going to happen. Now, you can't legislate for, for the, the mistake that the goalkeeper made, but that being said, that wasn't the only part of the game that was faltering for Chelsea. And he can have all the excuses he wants, Thomas Tuchel, about the plane didn't come yesterday to take my players up. So that's not ideal preparation. I understand that. But why the hell he brought it up? Because it's got nothing to do with the way the players perform. It's got nothing to do with Edward Mendy making a mistake. And this was all about Leeds, a team who I think a lot of us think or thought before the start of the season, it could be a tight one again for them with relegation, and it might be, but this is a huge shot in the arm. Don't forget they were 2-0 up last week at Southampton yep. and, and, and lost two goals. That was a body blow for them, so they've had a response. And I think the player personnel that he has will listen to what he's saying and his message, and I think that's very important for a manager. Uh, let's, we'll discuss that a little bit later on, but as you brought up the quote, let's uh, confirm what Thomas Tuchel said after the game. Everything that can go wrong did go wrong. It started yesterday. We had no plane to arrive, so we came on the bus. The players could fly, but for the coaching staff, it was a long ride on the bus. It continued today. So there was a plane. There just wasn't enough seats on that other plane. Look, Craig mentioned it. Why even, why even go there? Why even bring that up? Yeah. You talk to me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I am the plain uh, responsible. <laughs> yeah. Now uh, you're the Thomas Tuchel defender. I know you love Tuchel, yeah, but yeah, yeah. it just love... seem ridiculous to even go there when you've been I, I beaten love... so easily. Yeah. Now, fair point, Dan, and uh, I think that in in two in one week now you've seen both. Chelsea, where they are, they, they should have won against Tottenham and they were deservedly losing today. I felt that Thomas Tuchel after the game could have given maybe one compliment to Leeds United because that game, the energy game, the intensity of the game, as Craig was talking about, was excellent. The goals, good take, well taken. I, I hate uh, modern goalkeeper who forget that is an old-fashioned thing to sometimes kick the ball up in the stand, but that's another discussion. So I don't like that. That is, uh, uh, as a leader, I always admired Tuchel as a leader because he, he showed in Paris, he showed also in Dortmund that he can... Uh, can handle those kind of situations. But talking about the plane today, that is just silly. And the the wise people, I, I'm not talk, I'm not, I don't know who he's speaking to. Uh, I consider myself quite wise. Uh, and when I listened to that, I, I heard just a, a defensively coach who don't want to praise Leeds United for a for a for a great win. And that is not worthy uh, Chelsea. Chelsea should say when they are down and they were three nil down and great taking goals. So deservedly losing today against Leeds United. Yeah, well, what's interesting, Shaq, the, the quote that Jan's alluding to when he said, look, you know, this isn't about giving credit to anyone. This is our fault. Yeah. And and mm. Listen, that, that's fine if you're speaking to your players and, and your fan base. But I, I, I think there's, there's also an understanding within the game that you lose graciously. And, and especially when you lose as heavily as, as Chelsea did today. And, and Leeds, Leeds were deserving. There, there's no denying that. This was not about missed flights. This was not just about an underperforming Chelsea. This was about a Leeds who recognised that and, and took full, full advantage of, of, of Chelsea's weaknesses. That being said, if you're that poor, you, you have to address that. If, you're, if your only response is, we were that poor, then as manager, you have to account for that in, in some way, in, in some way more than the plane didn't, didn't pick up coaches up yesterday. I mean, which... No, I picked, oh, yeah, I didn't get the coach. didn't get the coach, which, the which makes absolutely no sense to me I, 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 at all. So it, it <laughs> just, it, it really just, it really just kind of grates and, and feels... Um, it, it feels disingenuous and leans into a, a, a feeling around 
spoiled football and footballer, oh, football coaches, more to the point this time around, in today's game. Uh, Gab is with us, who very rarely leaves London, and if he does so, it's on his private jet. So can you understand? He could have taken the coaches. <laughs> Gab could have taken the coaches. Have, what's it? Three hours in a coach, Gab. You would turn your back on that straight away. Uh, yeah, without question, especially because you know I'm sure it wasn't one of those luxury coaches with a toilet in the back and <laughs> yeah, and yeah. tables yeah. and video screens or anything like that. You know, I'm, I'm expecting, I think it was one of those converted yellow school buses with Tuchel rattling alarm. Look, I, I, I think what he, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because oh. I'm the original Tuchelista here. I think right now, as you've probably seen between last week and this week, the guy is wound tighter than a drum. Uh, he's had to do double duty because everybody's left the, cl the club uh, in terms of front office, leaving just him and Todd Bowley, who, you know, uh, until very recently was, was a baseball man. And I, I think he's the kind of guy who he lays out very specific plans. And then when there's a tiny hiccup in his plan, then he kind of loses it. And then it has a knock on effect. And I, I, I agree with the boys. I mean, he, you know, he, he talked about how they should have moved the ball faster to break the press and stuff like that. And and that way you can allow for individual errors because you create opportunities at the other end too. But, but ultimately, I think he knows that credit should have gone to Leeds United for playing the way they did. And I think it infuriates him um, that, you know, they knew the way Leeds were going to play and they weren't able to take the necessary countermeasures. And I think people are going to go and blame Conor Gallagher and Jorginho again. Yeah, it's not just them in the middle of the park. It, issues at the back. And I think as well, issues up front um, where with, with Sterling and Havertz, where, you know, at some point you have to wonder, is this a strike partnership that will work for me in, in different types of games, including this one? They're just not going to contend with those two up front. Sterling will get his fair share. Havertz will have his moments. We've seen that in his Chelsea career, you know, champions goal in the Champions League final. There's no doubt in his talent, but there's doubt in his consistency. And they won't, they won't contend unless they get themselves a natural striker. They haven't got the personnel who are clinical enough uh, well, to be able to get enough goals, in my opinion. Yeah, they'll, have game, they'll play way better than they played today, of course. They maybe even have a lot of performances like last week against Tottenham. But if you're not finishing off all that good play on a regular basis, it wears on you. Mm. It wears on you on a daily basis because you think, I can't keep playing like this. Obviously, today's an anomaly for them, hopefully. You can't keep playing like this and not killing teams off. So you watch Chelsea in the next week or so, whatever it is, 10 days, they're going to ramp up to try and get somebody in that can finish it off. No idea if it's going to be a Bamiyang or whoever right. it's going to be, but they're going to have to, in my opinion, they're going to have to go and get somebody or it'll be a long few months till January. At the end of the transfer window, are we going to see both Fofana and Aubameyang in a Chelsea shirt, Gab? I think right now there's possibly a greater chance of, of Fofana, though given how things are at Leicester, I think it's going to be really tough for, 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 for Leicester to, to give in. Um, I think the thing with Aubameyang is Barcelona, I don't believe, are going to want to uh, move both Aubameyang and, uh, and Depay. I think it's going to be one or the other. And I think it's looking more Depay right now uh, uh, to move. And as far as Alba's concerned, the other noise coming from, uh, from Chelsea is that, oh, look, but we do have that striker that, that Craig talked about. It's Armando Broja, who was, who was unavailable, injured uh, in this game. That's all fine and good. But, um, you know, to, to think that I, I, what would worry me is Alba and Broja are very different profiles of, of strikers. So I'm even wondering is how muddled are, are the ideas here? Mm. You know, how clear is the thinking in terms of if you do bring in another forward, what kind of profile do you want? Do you want an Alba or do you want an Armando Broja type uh, centre forward? I, I think to go to that point, Gab, I, I think it's, it is muddled and I think it's muddled out of desperation because... Uh, because Werner didn't work, because Lukaku didn't work, because uh, other players have been inconsistent at best and we've seen them in flashes, I think now it's like systems and way we're playing is almost kind of half out the window. It's like, get me something. Yeah. Right. Just get yeah. me something that can get me through to the next phase and then we'll figure it out from there. That's kind of, that's how right. I feel. 
where Chelsea are right now. But I, I think it's, it's more but than I just the strikers. I, I felt that the entire transfer window has felt that way. That they just, whenever somebody else seems to be linked with a player, Chelsea tries to hijack the move. And, and so it's not just a thinking or around the feeling of, of Lukaku and, and, and strikers and Werner before, before, before now. It's, it's just everything since, since this, in, in, in this window, maybe it is because of the, the front office departures that, that Gab is talking about, but it just, it just doesn't feel right with Chelsea. Uh, Jan? But, but we, yeah, we just see the managers, they use in the media as well to speak to someone. I mean, what is Tuchel doing today is that he's speaking to the guy who was responsible for that plane and logistic that he loves. He speaks to them. Uh, you have manager, he's speaking to... Nobody helps me here. I'm all on my own and blah, 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 sitting in your golden kefish. What's that in uh, when you are in golden prison, so to say? <laughs> uh, that, that's what you do. And, and the thing is, with, with, you see that with Nagelsmann as well. You saw it in the whole preseason. Sabitzer has been so good. Finally, he has arrived. Yeah. After one year, he has arrived because you one, one year ago said that that was a special player you wanted to get to Bayern Munich. So the manager, they're using also the media to speak internal thing. And that's what I think Tuchel is doing now. He's putting pressure on people to get him something. And the something now is that striker. You can do all the, the, the glory systems of the world and all, all the complicated systems of the world. But you need someone to just take off some of that the steam to get you that goal out of nothing and they don't have that player Chelsea at the moment and they, they suffer for that but they didn't lose today uh, against uh, Leeds United because of that thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube for more highlights analysis and exclusive content be sure to subscribe